Hello, friend. Hey, sometimes you had a long day and you want to make something simple and easy for dinner. Maybe you're tired when you come home. Maybe you had a long... You know, sometimes I like to make a quick and easy dinner. I don't want to spend a lot of time in the kitchen. That's right. Even Chef Bill likes to hit the easy button sometimes. I have just the thing for you. Tonight's dinner is going to be Japanese curry. Did I say Japanese curry? Yes, I did. Come on. Who's the chef? That you know, it's Chef Bill. All right, to get us started with Japanese curry, you have to find one of these in your grocery market. This is a S and B Golden Curry. There's a medium hot. There's a mild. There's other. You'll find other spice levels. So you have to choose which spice level you're comfortable with. So what what is this box? What is in this magical golden box? You open up this foil package. It looks like a, uh, a big chocolate candy bar. We'll deal with this guy later. So you get the box, you look on the side. There is a set of instructions as to how to make your curry. I'm gonna go over that right now for you. Uh, what ingredients do we use? Generally, you wanna have some kind of meat. Uh, you could use um, tofu, beef, pork, you could use uh, leftovers or uh, just potatoes or just vegetables. That's fine too. I'm going to be using some chicken breast. I generally would cook the meat raw. Just vegetables. I'm going to always use a bell pepper. I love bell pepper in this dish. It is cheaper than yellow and red and I can't tell the difference. I think this tastes the same so I just buy the green. I'm going to use a tomato in this one tonight. Now, this dish definitely calls for yellow onion. I have both red and yellow onion here. I, as much as I love red onion, I'm gonna put him aside tonight. I'm just gonna cut a little bit of this yellow onion. Okay, so here's a little tip about onions. Uh, what I do is I cut the just the top off that, I cut the bottom off. Cut the skin and peel that skin away a little bit. Just use your knife there. Now, if you soak this in some water, like a little uh, Tupperware of water for about an hour, it won't have the stinging or the astringent effect that it does make your eyes water or make you cry. Um, I'm just going to go ahead because I, I can take the pain. Let's go right ahead. Now I just want to take a chunk of my onion. I think I want about this much. I'm going to make big cuts in this guy. So I just have big chunks of onion. Now, as far as green bell pepper, um, I think I'm going to use the whole pepper for this. Now, remember, do you cut from the inside? Again, this is going to be big chunks. Big chunks. This doesn't have to, everything is going to be cut chunky. I have some carrots. I don't want to use a super big carrot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just cut about that much carrot. This is all my vegetables. I'm going to put this tomato in later. Okay, so I got everything I need. I got my chunks of uh, raw chicken breast. I got my vegetables and I'm ready to go. This is a really great opportunity to reuse old vegetables, get rid of old meats. It's sort of a catch-all. You can put anything in this curry and it generally will come out okay. I have my Le Creuset uh, cast iron ceramic pot. Now I take my pot and I just put it on a high heat. I'm gonna put it on a high heat for a little while. I'm gonna cook the chicken in peanut oil and then let it cool down, then throw in my other vegetables and add water. 
let that cook down, then add the curry mix, and I'm done. I'm going to add a little bit of tomato at the end just for a little treat. Okay, my pot has come to heat. You always want to let your pots heat up very thoroughly before you do anything. Um, I'm going to reduce the heat a little bit to medium. Using a high fire oil, peanut oil, and I guess we could say two tablespoons. I'm going to coat it in the peanut oil. Watch out for chicken in particular sticking. I'm putting in some onion. I do want to make this more of a stir fry kind of cooking, so I'm going to put it on high temperature. That's cooking up pretty good. I can see my onion starting to brown and uh, caramelize a little bit in there. I'm going to throw in the rest of my green bell pepper. I'm cooking vegetables by how long they take to cook. I'm not putting in my carrots just yet because the carrots are going to cook from the water. I would leave that out and let the lighter onion, the pepper. Now everything looks like it's getting cooked pretty good. The chicken looks almost cooked through. I'm going to take my hard vegetable, my carrot. Now I'm going to add um, about a cup and a half of water. The the recipe on the box itself calls for two and a quarter cups. I like to make it a little more water in my curry. Put this over rice, noodle, or just eat it straight. It's up to you. Now I cover this. I'm going to reduce the temperature to medium and let it sit for a good 15 minutes. I added a little more water, about half a cup to this, just because I wanted a little more water to cover my vegetables. If it's too watery, you can always just cook it down, cook it down, let the water evaporate, let it reduce. So when your knife can easily go through the hardest part of a vegetable that you got in here, you know you're, you're ready to go. This is where the magic happens. Remember that candy bar I had before? Well, now it's time to put it in the curry. You see it sort of has segments in it and you just break the segments and throw it in. All right, now those segments are in my curry and you just gotta mix, mix, mix. And magically, instantaneously, before your eyes, a curry emerges from what was just a pot full of boiling vegetables and meat. Truly is magic, my friends, and that is why I love this particular solution for Japanese curry. Okay, so that's thoroughly pretty much combined. It only took a couple minutes. I'm going to lower my heat. I do want to let it simmer for another five minutes. So let it simmer. Let it simmer another five minutes covered. Okay, so it's been about five minutes. You can see that curry is thickened up. It's starting to look more like a curry. If it's a little loose, if it's a little watery, you can just keep letting it boil and boil away that water. You could even put this over something like polenta. You know, get creative with that. Why not? It'll thicken up and it'll change its consistency. I want to let this cool down a good while probably another five minutes at least. I'm gonna add that tomato I was talking about earlier. You have a little scooper tool like this, it's good for taking out the center. I'm just gonna cut these in little slices. Just add that tomato and let that cook in the hot curry. In true Japanese tradition, I have a bowl of steamed white rice. Japanese curry.
Thanks for stopping by once again, friend. I'll see you next time, and until then, happy cooking from Chef Bill. <laughs>